7. Join your workstations to the new Active Directory domain. Okay, and um, after we set up the Active Directory domain on Optimus Prime and the DHCP server in DNS, um, now I'm on a Windows 7 workstation. So I've left the 2008 server Optimus Prime, and now I'm on the Windows 7 workstation Bumblebee. And I booted him up, and noticed that um, he's detected the Active Directory domain, and he got an IP address from the DHCP server. So when it de detected a new network, this pops up and asks, you know, what do you want to configure it as? Well, the most trusted would be home, and the least trusted would be public. I know that seems odd, but basically, um, you know, this would disable certain key features like network discovery, f you know, but it, it does make, it would make the workstation more difficult to hack. If you were at a coffee, you know, say your laptop at a coffee shop or something, you know, you're sitting in Denny's um, or McDonald's or someplace with free Wi-Fi, um, you know, Panera Bread or something, that might be more secure, Barnes & Noble, whatever. But on the other hand, this will, you know, we're on a, tr we're going to join a trusted Active Directory network, so this would enable the most features in the firewall settings. So I'm going to choose that and home network. Won't matter anyway, you know, once we join the domain, it'll be a, a different setup. So right now it's a standalone workstation, but soon we will join it to the Active Directory domain. So, um, you know, Bumblebee's on Earth, and he's protecting Sam, and he needs to meet up with uh, Optimus Prime. And this is, um, you know, home group networking. You don't really implement that in a business, um, you know, or corporate environment. So, um, I mean, you could actually just cancel out of that if you want. You don't really need to set it up. And, I, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to click on Cancel, save some time. Um, you know, only really in a small peer-to-peer -peer setting, but right now we're, we're moving to sort of an app a larger client server active direct directory architecture so <coughs> can't need speech therapy anyway um so what I want to do is, is join Bumblebee to the domain and, and um, I just want to make sure that I'm gonna go check my IP settings <coughs> so let me open a command prompt and I'll make it easier for you to see We'll just modify the colors a little bit on the background. Okie dokie. And I just want to use the IP config command real quick. And notice that I have leased an IP address from the DHCP server. So 222.222.222.11. Remember that was the first number in our scope that would be made available to clients seeking to lease an IP address from the DHCP server. So it's good. My connection specific DNS suffix is autobots.transformers. So I have received the domain information. So I'm getting, I'm making contact with the DHCP server. My gateway looks good, subnet mask, all that. Again, if I wanted to do all, um, and I'll pipe that to more, so it'll pause, again, just to show you. So if you come down, you can see DHCP has been enabled. Here's my layer two OSI MAC address right there. You know, ARP traffic and things. Um, here's my subnet mask, my IP version 4 address. We're not using IP version 6. Lease obtained Tuesday, September 13th. When will the lease expire? Monday, September 19th. So our default lease length of uh, 6 days. The default gateway of the DHCP server 2222222221. Well, that's crazy when you say that real fast, isn't it? The DNS server 2222222221. And um, you know, in this case, all the information looks good as far as our IP. So we want to be sure of that. We want to ascertain that we have that level of connectivity. Otherwise, we won't be able to join the domain. We'll have lots of problems. So up to layer three of the OSI, we have basic connectivity. And now we're ready to join the domain. And being sure of that and verifying that, all we have to do now is just right click in properties. And we're going to go from a you know peer-to-peer -peer net bias type, ar type ar architecture to a client server active directory type architecture. So notice how I'm, you know, in a work group Autobots and Bumblebee, I'm going to click change and I'm going to check the domain and the domain is going to be Autobots. I don't need the forest name. Um, it's not case sensitive either, but I'm trying to make this neat and clean. So yeah, I could do transformers and that would be you know, the forest, but you don't need that. You just need the tree name. I remember the tree we set up was Autobots. Okay. Bumblebee, I'm going to leave his name Bumblebee and I'll just need to click on OK. When it contacts the domain controller, now <coughs> I'm going to need to supply the enterprise or domain admin credentials. And so that's the administrator account and the funky password we're using. Remember the capital P um, 
at symbol lowercase ssw0rd to meet password complexity requirements. So I'll click on OK. And when all is said and done, we will have joined the Active Directory domain. It'll ask me to reboot. And I will reboot. And when I do, um, I'll have the option to either log in locally to the local SAM on this machine, or I can log into the Active Directory domain and eat more than one Active Directory domain if I, if I needed to. And the neat thing is, um, that's kind of cool because like, say you have a laptop and you use it at work. So you bring it to work, you boot up, lease an IP and you log into the domain at work. But then you take it home. Well, at home, you don't log into the domain. You don't have access to it, so you log in locally. So that's kind of cool on a workstation. Now, we couldn't do that on the 2008 machine because it's a domain controller. You only have domain login privileges. You don't have but I mean you're not going to pick up a domain controller and carry it around on a laptop back and forth uh, with you are you unless you're doing clandestine bad things with it reboot okay and we're logging back in now and you know just just be aware that um, you, you do have the option of on the workstation of choosing whether or not you want to log in locally to the machine or whether you want to log into the domain. And so I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is Bumblebee, which is my host name, right? That's the host name of the local computer, the local SAM Hive, our security account manager. See, Jeremy, so if I were to type my password here, it would, would not be the domain password, um, but it would be the password for Bumblebee. And likewise, I could go, you know, if I typed administrator, but it was Bumblebee's administrator, it would be the local administrator password, not the domain password. All right, so this is kind of like a user principal logon name, and it would be like the host name or the domain name backslash, and then the user account you want to log in as. Now, if I wanted to switch users, I could switch to the domain. So I could switch, if I said other user, notice, you know, log on to Autobots, and I could specify that. So I could say Autobots and administrator and and if I did that you know I'll lose my wallpaper so I'll have to implement Bumblebee's wallpaper but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and log in oh I didn't spell that right did it you're probably like you didn't spell that you butterfingers all right so Autobots administrator so um, remember how I showed you before how every desktop is different whether it's local or domain so but I'm gonna go ahead and do this and we'll switch the wallpaper over again and we'll be set, but th at this point we have been joined to the Autobots domain, so Bumblebee is now a part of Autobots. So I'm going to log in. Okay, so we're on Bumblebee, the Windows 7 workstation. We're logged into our Active Directory domain as the domain administrator. All right, not always a good idea security-wise, but for the purposes of keeping this brief and, and hopefully easy to implement, we've done that so using the built-in domain account now again I just want to kind of configure this desktop so I'll do the things I like I'm gonna show computer icon on the desktop and move this down here and move this down here and let's modify remember that those settings are different you're like well what happened to Bumblebee's wallpaper and so again if I go to computer really slow here come on there we go if I go to computer here Right, so there there are multiple desktops or different desktops, but in this case, I've logged in as administrator, and um, I want to implement that wallpaper. Okay, and also notice, let me cl right click and manage. From the previous installation, um, you know, it's 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 good security wise to disable your administrator account and create another account that you use as the administrator account. You just make that account a member of the administrator's group, and you know that way you know think about it if, if a hacker were trying to brute force dictionary attack you just like in Linux you'd always pick a root well in, in Windows you always pick the administrator account so if they know the name of the account then they already have won half the battle you only have to figure out the password but um, you know a lot of security conscious people they will disable the administrator account and then they'll use another account as the administrator so you know administrator account yeah but it notice that the administrator accounts disabled the local account okay but here C Germany is a member of administrators on Bumblebee 
So that's what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and enable it, but just be aware that the local administrator account is different from the domain administrator account, and they would have different desktops and everything. Um, and I'm going to let password it. Again, I have password complexity turned on here. Let me modify my password real quick. So I'm going to use the funky password. Um, you turn on by default. Password complexity. I'm just, just to simplify, I'm going to make it the same as my domain password there. All right, and then I'll enable it. Don't you don't have to do this, um, you know? But I'm just saying, I'm just trying to show you some of the differences when you join the domain. All right, so there's that desktop. Now, why don't we go ahead and um, switch our wallpaper back to Bumblebee? Okay, so our background's back to Bumblebee. And now let's just take a look at um, the name structure. So if I bring this up, notice now Active Directory Domain Autobots Transformers, notice Bumblebee, and the fully qualified do domain name or FQDM would be the host name Bumblebee.Autobots.Transformers, so tree and then forest. So host name tree forest is the structure there. And unlike the domain controller, yes, I could, if I wanted to, change to a different domain or switch back to a root group. So I have that option on the host. And then last, let's hop on over, let's hop back on over to Optimus Prime from Bumblebee. So we'll leave the Windows 7 workstation, go back to the 2008 server, and you'll see that a computer account was created when Bumblebee joined the Autobots domain, and also um, you'll be able to see that he leased an IP address on the DHCP server. Now go back to your domain controller and verify that a computer account was created, an IP leased from DHCP, and an A record created in DNS for the workstation you just joined to the Active Directory domain. So now we're back on our 2008 domain controller, and I just wanted to show you some of the changes that were implemented from the peer-to-peer -to, -peer to client server, uh, you know, architecture, or the, the changes that took place. Um, so now that uh, Bumblebee has been joined to the Autobots domain, first off, let's go to Active Directory Users and Computers. And remember that, you know, you lose the local users and computers. Matter of fact, that won't, that won't even appear if you right-click and manage and go look at You won't see it there, but instead it's replaced with these tools in Active Directory. So, um, users and computers, sites and services, domains and trust. Now, these two tools I discuss um, in detail in other videos, but I'm trying to keep it brief. So, I know I say that and I hardly ever deliver. Really, I'll try to keep this brief. I swear we'll, we'll make it short somehow um, and not go off on tangents. But anyway, Active Directory users and computers. So, um, I make a shortcut for it. And this tool replaces the local users and groups. And there's a lot you can do with it. Again, we're just this is just a bare bones, bare minimum, short, brief video on how to set up Active Directory. There's a lot to this, and again, there are plenty of other videos where I discuss it in much more detail. So I'm not gonna, in the interest of trying to stay brief and keep this under an hour, um, I'm not gonna get into all the details right now. We have to have to try to figure out a way to organize this and split it up into s smaller chunks um, so you can kind of do it maybe in sessions where you can hopefully sit down and, and comfortably watch one small part at, at, at a time. Um, I have a problem with that. Um, figuring out how to break the material up and all that. And Anyway, I'm, I apologize for that if I go too long or if I'm too brief, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to organize it in a way so that you can eas learn it as easily as possible without you know spending too much time at any one session. So anyway, um, I just wanted to show you, look, look that, you know, notice that a, a computer account was automatically created and in this case, so Bumblebee was added. So this is an organizational unit, computers, and any workstation that we add, Windows 7, Vista, XP, whatever, to the Active Directory domain, Autobots, will appear here. All right, and then we can apply a group policy to these objects, and that's a whole other tutorial again. I don't have time for it, but look up the videos on group policy. There are plenty of them, and they go into much more detail. And notice the different options and things that we can specify. There's a DACL delegation. Anything you would have for a standard Active Directory object, you know, access control entries, discretionary access control list, all that, for each computer account. So that's added automatically for you. And the other thing I want you to see um, is in the DHCP server, how leases are configured and added and managed for clients. Since we set up DHCP, any Windows 7 or Vista or XP workstation in our network environment that gets an IP from us, we can manage it and access it from here. 
We're not using version 6, so I don't have to worry about that. Only version 4. Now, I have two scopes. Before I had a Battlestar Galactica domain, yeah, I know how nerdy and dorky is that, but I had to get my dork on. So, um, and of course, I guess Autobots is not any better. Is it's still pretty dorky and nerdy, but hey, I was trying to have some fun here while doing sometimes a, a dry thing. So, but this is the I'm not interested in this scope. This isn't even you know it's not doing anything. It's not even there. But we're interested in this scope here. This is our two 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 two. So the whole network there. And if I go to address leases, notice that you can see here is Bumblebee Autobots Transformers. Um, he was leased the IP address 2222222211, and in this case, the lease expiration is 9-19-2011 at 1:58:11 p.m. And DHCP, and there's the hardware address, MAC address, and by default, the DHCP server will try to continuously give this same IP for the length of the lease to the the same computer. So every time Bumblebee boots until the lease expires, his MAC address is going to you know be given 2222222211 all right and then if i wanted to i could delete that lease and give it to somebody else and i mean you can manage all of that but i just wanted you to catch a glimpse of how that works much much more to dhcp active victor users and computers domain controllers much more to everything that we've talked about but i tried to make this a brief introduction um to you know maybe like a bare bones setup of active victory so if you are curious or you have questions, um, please see the other videos. I don't always have time to respond, but I'll, I'll try to be better about that. But I have, you know, I've, I posted a lot of other videos that go into more detail. Um, I just want to keep the time. I, I'd like to keep this, you know, not too long here. All right, so Active Directory setup. <laughs>